anti afro spin gollies before i get this commentary going i want to play a clip of a video a part of a video that i played earlier not too long ago this is going to set up the commentary about the global issue that i'm going to address involving eyes opportunia also known as eyes antonia we have to address some very important business. I'm going to use this clip to set things up. Stay tuned and I will return. Jerry, I was just wondering, I would like to ask them how they can hate people that they don't even know. And, you know, hate to me is a very strong word. And I don't understand how you can hate people that you know nothing, obviously, about. It's the culture, not the individuals. The culture? It's the culture. You, Look at the black culture. Do you know culture. that every single one you have contradicted yourself when you came up there? Yeah. You came up. You came up. and blah, 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 and talking about all that. Every every single one of you has contradicted yourself, and I have not heard anything up on that How stage that's know? worth hearing. Okay, so let me tell you what this is about. People can say whatever they want, they can think whatever they want, but remember, I'm talking here, and I'm going to tell you what I strongly believe, what's been played out ever since slavery was abolished. There are still vestiges of slavery that we struggle with as black people. To this very day, unfortunately, as a people, as a whole, we did not take away the best lessons that we observed the white slave masters engaging in. And one of those things is what you saw in this video, calling out our own. White folks are very good when they're fed up. They are good at calling out their own. Now, yes, what you saw here was a television show, but the issues are real. Compare the response. Remember that fake GoFundMe that the white folks got going? And they made 400,000 plus dollars, essentially the same amount Umar Johnson made when he ripped off our community. When those white folks found out that they had been snookered, they flooded the police department, they flooded the news media, and within 11 months, that case had gone to criminal court and the disposition was finalized. They had guilty pleas. With us, we don't call each other out enough. And that is one of the major problems we have in our community. And hats off to those who do call our people out. Umar Johnson, it took Umar Johnson about four years to get that 400 plus thousand through GoFundMe. These white folks lied and got it within a matter of, I think, not even a week, maybe six days, five days. And it was found out to be fraudulent and they said, hell no. Umar Johnson's refund started about, how much later after GoFundMe shut down that campaign? I think it was almost two years before refunds started. You see what the difference? So here we are with this eyes opportunity. And what I would like for you to do, you see here on the screen, a timestamp. What I don't want to neglect to do is emphasize the learning curve as to the facts about this video, which relate to restraining orders. Eyes Opportunia had questions about restraining orders across different states. And I so happen to know that information. Go to that timestamp if you want to hear that information because I have some other business to take care of first. Eyes Opportunia feels that she has grounds for a restraining order against someone in these YouTube streets. And I want you just to hear a brief recitation of her perceived justification so I can continue with the commentary. Again, stay tuned and I will return. I wanna make sure I'm doing this correctly. So it is grounds for um, a protection order for online harassment. So how does that work if someone is online stating that they wanna uh, call your job? Now, if I'm located in Washington, DC, um, I can go through Kansas to do that order. 
to make sure that they yeah so i'm in i'm in dc they're in kansas but it's been they've been threatening to contact my job so my question is can i can i file that order in kansas even though i'm in washington dc if that's where they're located Right, I'm not sure on that, but I can use phone number where you can call and find out. That is legal to for online harassment, correct? I'm not sure. You have to ask them. I mean, it's harassment though, but I don't know how they go by social media. You know what I mean? Online. Shouldn't because I'm in a different state, and being as though this is right, right. being as though this is online, and a person is claiming to want to possibly contact my place of employment. To you know, for whatever reason, I want to make sure that legally they know that they are not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Hold on, you guys. We're gonna get to the bottom of something real quick because I'm not playing with these people. Yes, not gonna play with your rap, Jay. I didn't address it because I was waiting. Cause you, no, 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 no. You would, you. I need the time stamps because somebody was in my chat and they said that he had, he had referenced that he was gonna be trying to find out where my employer. See, I told y'all already, this is for entertainment purposes only. If you can't uh, handle a little joning, if you can't handle, if you can't handle somebody cracking jokes on you or whatever, then okay, fine, we'll leave you alone. But I will tell you this, sir. I need my time stamps. You can make, you can, can you find my time stamps for me, please? I need my time stamps because what I'm not gonna do is play with people. These people actually think they got power. Like we don't know law. Like we don't know what it means to go down. I'm not gonna make a, it's not a lawsuit. It's not gonna be a lawsuit. It's gonna be called a stay away protection order. That's what that's called. That's called, you have no legal grounds to harass me off of something on YouTube that is merely for entertainment purposes only. When you cross over into thinking you're gonna be dialing up people's jobs, trying to talk about what I'm doing. Yeah, trying to throw your, your way No, 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 sir. Don't throw you, your way around. Okay. You're not going to do that. Okay, so you heard what I heard. So what I would like to say is this. Iris Opportunia, I still don't know. When you came into these particular YouTube streets, whether that situation with conscious energy the $8 and 20 cents you said you were going to send versus $820. I still don't know whether or not that was just a way to get in or was it you legitimately sending him $820 by accident. As time goes on, I wonder because then you later did this scheme trying to get attention back on you by going out to some Umar Johnson event that didn't hold. So you tapped onto something which you were confident was going to get you some play. And that is coming for Gerald Palmer, AKA Rev G. That's where you got most of your attention and you seem to be holding some of that attention. So you found your niche, right? Not only that you're biting off, with you're biting off of something that we don't mind you biting off contacting authorities because you feel your rights are being violated nobody's going to criticize you for that that's what you should do if somebody feels their rights are violated like the white folks are showing us but your method has always been kicking someone's ass and telling somebody to beat somebody up but now you're biting off what we have been recommending and we're not knocking you for that but there's something you need to know, Eyes Opportunia. It goes both ways. You can feel justified in your mind all day long. Judge will make the decision. And that decision will be based on a counterclaim. Because if you think that you're gonna file a restraining order against Gerald Palmer, that's gonna be free and clear, you're in for a very big surprise. And I seriously doubt you even realize all the things that you have stated. Gerald 
told you to stop talking about him many times because the things that you were saying was as if you knew what you were talking about and you didn't. True, you have a free right to express yourself even if you're telling lies, but it gets to a certain point when there will be consequences to telling lies about people. And unfortunately, in these particular YouTube streets, the only thing that seems to get people's attention, it's not common decency, it's not mutual respect, it's coming for your money, AKA a job or a credential or a certification. Is there anything illegal about that? No. Is there anything illegal against threatening to call someone's job or saying you're gonna call someone's job? Not necessarily. And when I say not necessarily, if you say you're gonna call someone's job and you say that the person molested students and sexually assaulted students and had affairs with students, that's illegal. And that's what was done to Gerald Palmer. But if you're calling someone's job to alert the employer that the employer is violating code of conduct and public servants are not the only ones that have code of conduct regulations. Can you think of any job that would want to be associated with anyone that spews hatred towards a specific group of people? And it isn't just about LGBTQI. Look on the screen here. These are protected groups. And yes, white folks would be considered protective groups if you're referring to their race in a derogatory manner. This is not about an individual dispute that you would be held accountable for. You are broad brushing an entire group of people and you're using Gerald as the conduit who didn't do a damn thing to you. Whatever reason you have to get all amped up over Gerald Palmer being an LGBTQI advocate, that's your issue but you've taken it to a whole other level. The criticisms that you're leveling, who gives a damn about you talking about someone's teeth? No one gives a damn about that. You spew hatred. You spew, you're, you threaten violence. That's a common practice that you have exhibited here, right here in these YouTube streets. And you say that's Gerald Palmer's fault? No, it's not Gerald Palmer's fault. And you cannot tell anybody that they have to take something as a joke. You are not going to like it. If Gerald turned around and said to you, you know what, I Zabertunia, I was never gonna call your job. I was just joking with you. You wouldn't find that one bit funny. You're on, the, you're on the phone calling courthouses, which you have a right to do, but you cannot come for people who did absolutely nothing to you. And they tell you to stop, they tell you to back off. They give you all kinds of warnings. None of them were illegal. And then when they state they plan to follow through, you want to act like you're the victim. You're just like, let me see your handcuffs. You had the Harris County Sheriff's Department showing up, talking to her. She still thinks she's a victim. She made false CPS reports, false police reports, and she considers herself the victim. So you have a right, by all means, if you feel Gerald Palmer has harassed you, file those documents, but you better be prepared for a fierce counterclaim, a fierce counterclaim, because you started, you initiated the harassment of Gerald Palmer. And what did he do? He simply did parodies, funny responses to you. But when he stated enough is enough, now I'm going to do what I know is going to impact you because nothing else he did, you gave a damn about. You just thought it was funny. You're getting these people in your chat. These people are not helping you. You came for people in so many ways and you denigrated them as a group. Not that these people did jack shit to you. Like the person said at the beginning, you don't even know anything about Gerald. And here you are coming for him like you've known him all his life. Using the lies that other people have spewed. This is where you now find you have your niche. You have people coming to your page and you think you want to use Gerald Palmer as a whooping post. Well, he's not going to allow you to do it. Again, if you feel you have been aggrieved, by all means, file your restraining order. The judge will make a decision and you better know you are asking for timestamps. Gerald Palmer does not need to ask for timestamps. He has all the documentation of all the things that you have said about him and other people. 
including your threats of violence. You threaten violence. And so you're worried about somebody calling your job is threatening violence, something your job would approve of is targeting a specific group or groups of people and spewing hatred towards them. Is that something your job is going to approve of? Well, then you probably should be watching what you say. Don't blame Gerald Palmer for any of that. This is something that you decided to do. The $820 thing didn't work. The Umar Johnson thing didn't work, but let me go for the go to guarantee to get me cash apps and traffic. Trash Rev G and trash AAS. It is not worth it in my opinion because you had better believe that Gerald Palmer is beyond fed up and is not going to back down. People just didn't get it. They thought because he was quiet and sat back and watched that he was a whooping post opportunity and he isn't. It doesn't matter that you're a woman. It doesn't matter that he's a man. He has a right to defend himself and he'll do just that. People, now I'm going to give anyone out there, Iris Opportunia, you specifically, information that you were asking about during that phone call about restraining orders across state lines. Let me be clear. You do not have to be an attorney to help someone with the restraining order. See, that's another barrier that our people love to put up to try to stop you from helping people. So first off, you have to get the correct state in which the person resides. You said Kansas. I'm going to help you out. Gerald lives in Missouri. It is no secret. So Kansas is one thing. Missouri is another. So what you're going to need to prove for a restraining order is that you have two different jurisdictions. You're in the district of Columbia and then you have Missouri. Are those laws similar enough so that judges in both states will authorize will sign off on or approve or validate a restraining order. That's the question right there before you even have a court hearing. So you're going to have to go to court. However, DC allows you to file electronically, get a judge to be convinced. You would have to have convinced a judge in your home state that the laws in Missouri and the laws in DC are similar. So if that judge, buys that, then you have to go to Missouri and you have to convince a judge in Missouri that the laws are similar. Either one of the judges says, no, you're done. Here's the other thing you have to think about. What you would be getting would be temporary. If they felt you proved that there may be harassment, it would be a temporary restraining order. And then Gerald gets to come to court to contest that, what he would do within a certain number of days in advance of the court hearing, he would submit a response. Then you both go to court and then a judge decides, but you need two judges in two states to give you the preliminary green light that as we speak right here and now, there is potential validity that Gerald Palmer is harassing you. And again, these are decisions that the judges are going to make. One thing I will say about our court system, it's our court system. Whatever you think about it, they're going to look at both sides. Obviously one person or the other isn't going to be happy, but I trust our court system. I have absolutely no trust in the so-called justice system in these YouTube streets. And what I'm saying you, I'm meaning It doesn't have to be you personally. In fact, it can't be you personally serving Gerald Palmer, but you can hire someone to do the legwork and go through the court system and get Gerald served. You can't personally serve him. You don't have to go to Missouri. Somebody can do it for you. That's typically what happens. So let me add something else before I continue on. If you're talking about the federal court, the federal court does not issue any what they call injunctions, AKA restraining orders, unless they are attached to a case that has been filed in federal court. So that injunction would be in place while the case is meandering through the system. So the federal system is out unless you file a federal action against Gerald and go into court and say, 
judge, he's harassing me so bad that I need relief now until we get things going. The person who filed the lawsuit against me and Rev G tried that and was shot down. There was zero evidence. And it is a very high standard. Restraining orders are exceptions. They are not the rule. But I am just giving people information not meant to in any way to discourage anybody from going full speed ahead. If he or she feels their rights are being violated, they're being threatened, go for it. Do not ever let me stand in your way. But there is one big problem, Eyes Opportunia. And don't let me stop you from moving forward by what I say. I'm just telling you facts. There is no civil harassment restraining order in Missouri. I don't know about District of Columbia, but there isn't one in Missouri. So right there, you're not going to be able to prevail. But proceed as you want. Don't listen to me. Go for it. This is a reason why Gerald had problems initially with fold up body because his harassment was just harassment. In other states, it would have qualified for a restraining order, depending on your state. Another state that does not have a civil harassment restraining order is Texas, which means the harassment has to be to a criminal level. And that's what Gerald's rose to because the harassment was so severe. It included so many aspects of his life. It brought in his employer and the harassment was 100% false. It was persistent. It was malicious. It was ongoing. So that met the criminal element. There are other things going on with that case. It's not closed. It's still open. I'm not going to get into the reason why there is a snag that you're trying to unsnag, but it needs to rise to the level of criminal. I say you don't meet that criteria, but don't let me stop you. Go forward how you feel you want to move forward, but just know there will be a fierce counterclaim. If for some strange reason, Missouri decides to ignore its own laws and grant you a restraining order that they're going to enforce in Missouri. Even if a judge in DC issues a restraining order, it's not binding against somebody in another state. You have to get that restraining order served in the person's state, which means a judge would have to agree that it's enforceable. So go for it, eyes opportunia. I suggest you think very long and hard before you open up your mouth again about Gerald Palmer, because what you did was wrong. You just went ham on someone who did nothing to you. You started all of this and now you're saying, help me, help me. He's going to call my job. You need to stop what you're doing. You're harassing this man. You initiated all of this. He didn't do anything to you at all. Now you've talked a bunch of shit about me too, but whatever. I've ignored you, but you went a place, uh, you went places with Gerald that was so out of line and you thought you were safe because you saw other people doing it. Well, just so you know, fold up body's not safe. It is going to come down like a ton of bricks on fold up body. He just doesn't know it. Patience, people, patience. It's all gonna meet up with fold up body in one arena. And there's some other people in these YouTube streets who are in serious trouble. Let me see your handcuffs is one of them. I understand that she rocks with you. This is not somebody you wanna listen to. Here's a word to the wise. Don't assume that all black people are gonna let you just walk all over them. There are some who don't care who are doormats, but Gerald Palmer is not one of them. I'm not one of them. And actually nobody that I'm rocking with is one of them. Stop harassing people. You are harassing people who have done nothing to you. I'm going to talk about somebody because they said something about me. If I so choose to talk about them in most instances, I don't even bother. Quit trying to make Gerald your harassment content. He's not going to sit still for it, but eyes Antonia, Proceed how you feel. You feel you need to proceed. And for sure, Gerald is going to respond accordingly. He does not need to look for any timestamps. You're putting out, again, the call for timestamps. He doesn't need any of that. You cannot stop somebody from contacting your job if they think that you're harassing them. He never said he was going to harass your employer. Most certainly, he never said he was going to lie on you, and he absolutely 
will not lie on you. That you'll have a guarantee. So if he's contacting your employer and is giving them truthful information, where is the harassment? If he's lying on you, then you have a case. But just calling your job or saying he's going to call your job with truth is not illegal. Again, I reemphasize, don't listen to me. If you think you have a case, move forward. I'm just giving plain, simple facts about what went down. People, be sure you do your research. And most of all, never forget to heed the warning. Fire beware.